yeah, I did have the opportunity to see the Steam Frame as well as two other devices, the Steam Machine and Steam Controller. But yeah, I had a lot of fun taking a look at Valve's new headset. Yes, yes, and it's a beautiful looking headset with a very unconventional design. Uh, more of a focus on balancing the weight, it seems, between mm. the front and the back, with uh, the battery mounted to the back of the headset and the sort of visor with a complete with a removable section That's on correct. the front, which is really interesting. Uh, so before we even get into the specs, tell me, how comfortable was this? It was pretty comfortable. Like you said, I think the key innovation here is they've mounted the battery on the back side of the headset. So that helps to split the weight. Now, if you look at a product like the Apple Vision Pro, right? The first generation of that product had all the weight in the front, but for the yep. second generation, they actually added a counterweight to the back. So this is like a natural counterweight that actually enhances the device's functionality, leaves you with a much less front heavy, uh, front heavy device and allows the weight to be distributed equally. It also has like a ski mask style band that's horizontal that helps to distribute the weight very evenly. I found the mask itself to be very, very comfortable. It's uh, It has this nice, nice cloth interior. It feels very good over the head. I don't think it will fit glasses necessarily, but with contacts, it was fine. So that's one note, but presumably maybe you'll be able to get inserts for it from a third party or something down the line. Um, I, I found it very, very, uh, comfortable, I'd have to say. it was. It, it's a very comfortable feeling headset. Oh, that's cool. Actually, speaking of inserts, that's something I buy for all my headsets now uh, mm -hmm. because I think it really makes the experience better. Did you happen to note any sort of like potentially easy mounting points for those? Because he per headset, it quite, it's quite variable. No, I didn't notice anything like that particularly. I will say that the headset does sit quite close to your face and it is relatively okay. thin, right? I, I don't know, maybe we're right. skipping ahead a, a, bit, a, bit, a bit, but it uses pancake lenses. So it does sit quite close to your face, but I presume if you had thin inserts, like index 1.67 inserts or something, that would probably work, I, I imagine. But again, I have no particular knowledge of that. I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. I know on the Quest 3, it's very, they click in very nicely with very mm -hmm. thin little... Uh, inserts versus like say the PSVR2 where they're very clunky but hopefully that is taken care of um, we'll actually talk more about the optics and the screens in a moment but let's talk about the basics of the hardware then right like this is a standalone unit uh, so it, obviously it's designed to function by itself just like the Quest 3 um, presumably it, it runs a their sort of like Steam VR form of like a Steam OS style environment which is something else we'll get to. But first, what's the hardware in this thing? Yeah, so it is a standalone headset, but I would I would contrast this a little bit against devices like the Quest, where the Quest is really a fully on its own, fully self-contained, well, outside of the controllers, of course, headset, right? It's designed to be used with the internal processor. It has an app store. It has all these things. The Steam frame is much more of like a, the emphasis is more on streaming, but it also has these standalone gaming capabilities, right? So I'd, I'd, I'd contrast that a little bit where it is a standalone mm. headset, but it's not quite, it's more in the middle of kind of a streaming headset and a standalone headset, whereas something like the MetaQuest is, can do streaming, but it's, it's more emphasized on the standalone portion of that. Um, in terms of spec, the internals are interesting here. We're looking at a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor and mm -hmm. 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM. So that's a pretty powerful phone processor. That's the kind of uh, chip that would, would have been seen in 2023, 2024 uh, cell phones, right? That's a pretty powerful chip. And it also has the benefit here of actually being actively cooled. So it has a small heat sink, small fan, and it also has multiple TDP modes that you can use here. So you oh, have like nice. a high performance, you know, performance balanced, whatever, power saving, that kind of thing. It has a 21.6 watt hour battery, which again is mounted to the back there. And uh, battery life is a bit up in the air, but a valve engineer told me like best case, about four hours. Worst case, maybe one hour, right? Depending on what mm. you're doing. So streaming you'd think would be more close, would be closer to that four hour mark. If you're sure. running like an intense game in the turbo mode or whatever it happens to be, that would probably be a little bit closer to that one hour mark because that chip itself, you know, you're probably playing 15 watts off the chip, 12 watts off the chip. You're pulling a considerable amount of power for those uh, displays and every other component that goes into this headset. So that's basically the internal spec in terms of performance. But obviously it comes with some storage, so it has either a 256 gigabyte configuration or a one terabyte storage configuration, and it has a micro SD slot, 
Now, this oh, SD okay. slot, it's not SD Express. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily the fastest, although I think mm. for the kinds of games you'd be running on this device, probably not too much of an issue, I would think. Um, and interestingly, critically, you can take an SD card from your Steam Deck or from your Steam Machine and load it into this headset, sw hot swap it into this headset and actually no play way. games that way. Yeah, it's really cool. So you can have a game library, like a, a one terabyte SD card. You just move it between units. So you don't actually have to re-download that software. All of that is pretty good and definitely sounds like a nice sort of upgrade over what we have on the Quest 3. Uh, specifically, it has double the amount of memory for starters, which is huge. But then the other thing is just having swappable storage at all. Uh, the Quest 3 does not have this currently. So you basically, you buy in with either the 128 gigabyte or the 512 gigabyte model and you're stuck with it, right? So there's no way to expand it. Um, and there's some other other functionality on the Steam Deck, or sorry, on the Steam Frame. I'm already thinking the, this Valve lineup uh, <laughs> that would make expandable storage, I guess, more valuable perhaps than it even is on the Quest. But um, so yeah, that's that's really interesting stuff. I think. 